The Challenge of the Yukon. On King! On, you husky! The Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the Challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog King met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. Sergeant Preston had left Dawson City and was driving his dog team at a fast pace on the trail to Forty Mile. A light snow had fallen the night before and carpeted the trail with a smooth white surface. Preston halted his team when he heard a voice hailing him from the woods. Sergeant Preston, hello. Okay. Hello. Hello. Yeah, sure is black meeting you. Why, Jack, I didn't recognize you. How are you? Just fine. I've been hunting and got a moose. Oh? I, uh... I wonder if you'd help me pack some of the meat back to our cat. Why, sure, I'd be glad to. Oh, I was hoping I'd see somebody on the tray with a dog team. <clears throat> you think I'd better tie this on? Oh, leave it like that. It'll ride all right. Uncle Frank is going to buy a dog team the next trip we take to Dawson. You need one, Jack. Nothing way out here in the wilderness, but they're expensive. Ah, oh, we don't have to worry about that now. Uncle Frank's claim has turned out to be a rich one. Oh, that's good news. He's taken a lot of gold out of it the past two months. Why, he wouldn't even leave it long enough to go hunting with me for a couple of days. Made me go alone. You've been gone long? Since yesterday morning. The snowfall we had last night was a lucky break. You couldn't miss the tracks. Hmm. They were just like letters in the snow. Well, we should be at your cabin in time for a nice supper of good fresh moose meat. Yeah, we certainly made wonderful time. I'll have to give King a big slice of this moose for doing such a good job. Oh, your cabin's dark. Ah, Uncle Frank must have gone to sleep. Oh, King! Oh, you huskies! And there's no smoke coming out of the chimney. Ah, that's funny. Why would he let the fire go out? I'll take part of this pack. You get the rest. All right, Sergeant. We'll put it in the storeroom. Have to go through the cabin. And I'll open the door. Uncle Frank. Yeah, I guess he's not here. I'll light a lamp. It's so dark in here. Put your pack down, Sergeant, till you can see where you're going. All right. Oh, what's that? I fell over something. Sergeant. What's wrong? It's a body. Like that. Is it? That's your uncle, all right. Is he dead? Yes, Jack, he is. Your uncle's been murdered. Murdered? He was hit from behind. See his head? Oh, how horrible. Powerful man did this. The skull's almost crushed. But who could have done it? We're way off the tree. Yeah, there are lots of thieves and killers in this country, Jack. Look at this cab. Someone's ransacked it. Yes. Everything's been turned upside down. Look. The trap door. Is that where your uncle kept his gold? Yes, under the floor. There was a fur rug over it. It's gone. Here's the tin box empty. Did your uncle have much gold in it? About five sacks. Hmm. Does anyone know who might have done this? Nobody, Sergeant. Everyone who knew Uncle Frank liked him. He didn't have an enemy. And no one knew he had all that gold. You're the only person I told. Well, help me put him on the bed, Jack. Cover him with this blanket. Oh, who could have murdered him like this? Well, your uncle may not have seen him at all. We know he was a powerful man. Get a lantern, Jack. I'll have a look outside. All right. Sergeant. Yes? Someone slept in my cot last night. It's all messed up. Well, and whoever did this stayed all night with your uncle. That was the trouble with Uncle Frank. He trusted everyone. He probably gave this man a bed for the night. Bring that lantern. I'll have a look outside. I think there may be tracks. Now, we'll see. Come on. If the killer left after the snowfall, we may be able to trail him. 
Both the landlord are here. Well, hello, King. Come back, fella. Now, look. Here's some tracks. Yes. These aren't your uncle's, are they? No. No, they're much bigger than Uncle Frank's. They were made by a big man. Wait, uh, hold that lantern closer. Yeah. Yeah, they're not evenly spaced. This man was lame. You see, Jack, he took one long step and then a short one. Yes. And he was heavy. Look how deep they are. Well, there's something to go on. A big man with a limp. Here, King. <laughs> These tracks, boy. I want him. But, but you're not leaving now, are you, Sergeant? No, Jack. Come back, King. Here, fella. Come on back. I want him to get the scent. Now, remember it, Jack. We'll feed the dogs and let them rest for a few hours till the moon's up. Come back into the cabin. Here, King. Come along. What are you going to do, Sergeant? The scent of those tracks may have been cold, but that bed should tell King a lot. Here, fella. Up here, boy. Find him, son. He's the one I want. Do you think he knows what you mean? The King's been on sunny cases with me, Jack. He knows there's been a death in this cabin. And when I put him on the trail of a man and he associates the scent with death, he knows I want him. Yes, but if we wait, won't he forget it? A dog remembers a scent just the way a man remembers a face. Now, if he only stays in 40 Mile, we have a good chance of catching him. Sing us another song, Annette. That French one. Oh, man, no. My throat, it is raw from singing. You would have me croaking like a frog tomorrow. <laughs> I could listen to her sing all <laughs> Forty Mile is a different place since you've come here, Annette. You sure made the silver slipper bar the brightest place in town. Always you flatter me too much. It is lucky I have my brother with me for protection. Well, uh, sit down here at my table anyway. All right. I will rest for a while. Well... Then, Look at that big man who just come in. He's lame. Hmm. Have you ever seen him here before? No. Gosh, what a big fella. And lame. Poor look. Is that sack full of gold? He must have made a strike. It sure is gold. Uh, I will see you later, Ben. I must know who he is. Here's a chair, Nick. Oh, no, Yeah. Hello, stranger. I have not seen you here before. Yeah, I've been prospecting. But if I'd have known anything like you was here, I'd have given it up long ago. <laughs> have a chair. Thank you. Your claim, it is near here? Nah. Now I got all the gold out of it. I'm heading for the States. Got all the money I need for the rest of my life. Oh, you are one of the lucky ones. <laughs> yeah, you look kind of lucky yourself. There's an awful pretty diamond in that ring. Well, there he is the lucky one. Lucky at cards. A man, he could not pay him, so he gave him his ring. It must be a couple of carats. It's worth a lot of money. Many people have wanted to buy it, but no, I will not say. I got plenty of bags full of yellow dust like this one. No. I do not need the money. You uh, live with your brother? We, we have big cabin way out on edge of town. You, I suppose, are at the hotel. <laughs> are you trying to be funny? There ain't a room in this town. Oh, poor man. Where will you sleep? Uh, you said something about a big cabin. Could you and your brother put me up? I'd pay you anything you ask. You are here for only one night? Yep. Yeah. Leaving early tomorrow. Wait. I will ask my brother. Pierre? We? Oui. You call me Annette? Uh, this is my brother, Pierre. And this... Oh, mon ami, I forget your name. It's Nick. Nick Ames. Welcome to 40 Mile, monsieur. Pierre, uh, this is a poor rich man with no roof for his head tonight. Cannot sleep in the snow with all his gold. It will not keep him warm. Oh, you can stay with us. We have home. Well, now, that's just mighty nice of you. You see, with the rich man, we are not afraid. If you are poor, 
Maybe you would rob us. <laughs> <laughs> Our cabin it is on the way to the border, the other side of the town. Well, that suits me fine. Now, uh, let me buy you a drink. Mm, no, it is very late. Soon we must be going. Oh, now that I know I've got a place to sleep, I'd like to celebrate a little. Thank you, monsieur, but when we go to our cabin, we will celebrate. I have some wine you would like. Hey, come on, Ben. Yeah. Wake up. It's morning. we got to clean up this bar. What? Where am I? You were set on sleeping on these two chairs last night after drowning your sorrows over Annette. Over Annette? Yeah, you kept mumbling about how she left your table. Oh, yeah. Now I remember. Well, Sergeant Preston, what are you doing in town this early? Why did you come last night? Oh, just got up here. Hello, Ben. Hi, Sergeant. This is Jack Hale, a friend of mine, Bill. And this is Ben Shaw. How do you How do? You doing? I'm checking all the bars to see if anyone saw a big lame man around here last night. He's here in town somewhere. Well, we were so busy last night, I didn't notice anyone. He limps quite badly. What's he look like, Sergeant? Wait, I can't tell you. That's all I know about him. Say, that man who left with Annette and her brother, he limped and he was big. He left with Annette. Who's she? She lives in the last cabin west of town with her brother. You say he left with them for the night? Yes, sir. That's why I got mad or sorrowful or whatever I was. We'd better get out there right away. Oh, anything wrong? The man's a killer. I hope Annette and her brother are still alive. I hope everything's all right. I'm Monty. Pierre. I'm uh, sorry to bother you like this. Don't be frightened, please. I'm looking for a man, a big man with a limp. They told me at the Silver Slipper that he spent the night here. Annette, tell them to come in. Oh, we oui. Come, come in. Thank you. Uh, this is my brother, Pierre. How, How do are you, you, monsieur? The man who spent the night here, has he left? We, oui, he has gone. Oh, you're both lucky to be alive. He's a murderer. You do not tell me this. Did you have anything valuable that he might have stolen? Oh, wait, I must go. A murderer and a thief. Yes, he killed and robbed my uncle. My ring, it has disappeared. Sergeant, go, go quickly and find him. That ring, it is all I have. That robber, that thief. That is why he leaves before we are up. All right, fellow, we're going. Now, don't worry, we'll get him. Newly headed for the border. He hasn't had too much of a stir. King, come back here. What? He's gone behind the cabin. That's funny. Come on, Jack. Let's see what's wrong. He's pouring at that pile of branches. Help me get these branches off, Jack. Right. Oh, what do you suppose it... Oh. Sergeant, look. Well, King found the murderer, but he's dead. Hmm. Stay here, Jack. Come on, King. You had gone. You want something more, Sergeant? Oh, yes. Perhaps you can explain the body outside your cabin. The body of a big man under some branches. The man you say stole your ring. <gasps> Don't move, either one of you. Pierre, he is found out. You're both under arrest for murder. And when we search this cabin, I'm sure we'll find your ring and five bags of gold. Watch them, King. <laughs> These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit. And all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at this same time. This is Larry McCann speaking. This is the Michigan.